This tutorial covers groups. As we've mentioned before, groups in Houdini are collections of components of objects, such as points or faces, what Houdini calls primitives. These collections are sometimes called clusters in other applications. They allow you to store a selection and use it again and again. You can also use groups to select points and primitives using formulas and bounding boxes, but that's beyond the scope of this introduction. I've just got a simple polygon mesh sphere here to use to demonstrate groups. But before we get into the group node itself, a quick look at how Houdini handles selections in general. If you use a tool from the shelf, the process of picking which components to apply, to apply the operation to is automatic. For example, let's use the facet tool. By the way, the facet tool allows you, amongst other things, to control the smoothing of polygon faces. If I select the facet tool, I get a message asking me to choose the faces I want to apply it to, and then press enter. So let's select some uh, faces and press enter. As you can see, a uh, facet node has automatically been added to my network at the geometry level. Let's have a look at that node. In common with almost every surface operator in Houdini, it has this parameter at the top called the group parameter. The group parameter stores a list of the points, edges or faces that the operation is to be applied to. Since in this case we're looking at faces, primitives, the list of numbers here is simply the primitive numbers of the faces we selected. We can confirm this by turning on view primitive numbers in the right hand toolbar. Although it may not be easy to see, the numbers do match. But not all nodes are available as shelf tools. What do I do if I want to use the color node, for example? The color node simply adds color information to points or primitives on an object. Let's delete the facet SOP. The only way to access the color SOP is through the tab menu. Let's select some points on the sphere first. And then let's try using the tab menu with our cursor in the network view. So we get the SOP, but it's not connected to anything. And if we look at the node, the group field is empty. So it's not taking into account our selection. Let's just delete the node. This illustrates a pretty important feature of Houdini. If you want it to take account of your selection, you must use the tab menu with your cursor over the 3D view. Let's try it again. As you can see this time, it has automatically connected the node. And it's also included the points we selected in the group field. Now, as I said, the group field just contains a list of point numbers. Nothing more clever than that. In fact, we could type in the point numbers by hand if we wanted. But an important consequence of this is if I do something that changes which points are where, or the total number of points, or primitives for that matter, then the color SOP will still apply the color to those points, but they'll be in the wrong place. You'll have to select again. It's, uh, we've made our color a nice red. If I go back to the sphere and change the number of columns, we can see that the red is now distributed all over the place. This is because by increasing the number of columns we have rearranged the points on the sphere. What if this happens, or for some other reason, you want to change the selection for a node after you've laid it down? In fact, Houdini allows you to change the selection at any time simply by selecting the node, moving your cursor over the viewpoint port and press enter, and then by right-clicking on the select button you can choose reselect for the current tool. Uh, the shortcut for this by the way is the back tick key. 
As you can see, the point numbers that we originally selected are selected again, and we can change them, add new points, and so on. When we've done, we can press Enter. But what if I want to preserve the selection in a more general way, so that I can reuse it in different nodes? This is where the Groups op comes in. The Groups op will keep either point or primitive selections. It doesn't handle selections of edges very well. Let's delete our Color op and create a group of points. Hit S to get the Select tool and make sure we're in point selection mode. I'm going to select a few points and then with the cursor over the 3D view use the tab menu to group uh, to get a group geometry SOP. This has now stored our point selection in the group. We can see it down here in the pattern field. I'm going to change the node name to my group. Now the node name and the name of the group are not necessarily the same. The group name is here and by default it's group 1. It's often useful to change this to use an expression $OS. $OS simply takes the name of the node and replaces uh, the group name with that. Let's add a color SOP to the network using the network view this time. We can see the group field is empty. To use the group of points we just created, uh, we can either type the name or we can use the drop down menu at the side to have a look for the group that we just created. And we can make the color red again. As you can see, as expected, the color SOP is now being applied to the points in the group. You can see what groups are available by middle-clicking on any node. This tells you uh, what groups there are in that point in the network. As we can see here, it tells me the number of points in my group. Note that groups persist through all the nodes further down the network until you delete them, so they can be used again and again. The group node has many sophisticated options that are beyond the scope of this short tutorial. One important one is the Create Ordered tick box. If the order in which you picked points or primitives is likely to be important, then make sure this is ticked. For example, the, the Poly Loft SOP often does strange things if you've tried to feed groups into it which are not ordered. Just a quick summary of the other ways that you can use the Groups op uh, to select points. You can use a formula, for example using data that you've early atta earlier attached to nodes, or you can select every so many points, a range of points. The Bounding tab allows you to select points or primitives using a bounding sphere or box that you position, and indeed that you can animate. And for points only, it allows you to select based on any arbitrary geometry that's attached to the second input of the group SOP. The normal and the edge tabs allow you to select uh, normals or edges, uh, faces or edges based on particular properties of the edges or normals. Finally, the combine tab allows you to combine existing groups, invert them and so on. And the edit tab allows you to rename or delete groups. The group node is a very powerful tool, more powerful often than equivalent clusters in other applications.